is a uh, possibly soon to be stormy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here, here. And we have washed up in the paradise of Bacalar, Mexico. Bacalar, Mexico, and you're all gringo. Good Lord, I've got the gringo estomigo. Oh, man. So let's hope Montezuma's revenge does not head into high gear during this rant. That could be embarrassing. So... <coughs> This is Senor Don Gato was a cat on a doomer's bed. Don Gato sat. Uh, so Don Gato has taken over for Sancho Panza as a stand-in <coughs> co-host. But it is Saturday, February 4th, 2023. But as somebody has already reminded me, I did not do my weekly ecological meltdown roundup rant yesterday where I go over here to mongabay.com to see how Rhett Butler and the boys and girls are tracking the collapse of global industrial civilization and so here we go you know this, this has become one of the past couple of years the standard bearers of hopium smoke and this is this bullshit about the recovery of the monarchs. So, uh, you know, Red is a bit of an uh, apocaloptimist himself. As you can see in this sentence, Western monarch populations reach highest number in decades. <coughs> the, <coughs> the Western monarch butterfly population reached its highest number since the year 2000 this year with more than 335,000 butterflies counted during the annual monarch count in California and Arizona. I didn't realize there were monarchs in Arizona. Um, the population rebound is a positive development but the species is still considered endangered and far from its population numbers in the 1980s when millions, millions with an S of the butterflies could be seen in the trees. <coughs> okay, so, uh, you know, th this is one of these, the, 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 the major apocaloptimism smoking I see going on. Alright, there's 335,000 if there used to be millions, that means at least two million. Three hundred and thirty-five is one third of one million. So this means if millions means two millions, that five out of six monarchs that were nesting there before 2000 are gone. You know, it's kind of like th th this recovery of the monarch population. You know that song, a hundred bottles of beer on the wall, a hundred bottles of beer, take one down and pass it around, 99 bottles of beer on the wall. Okay, pretend like you're singing that song and an earthquake comes by, okay, and knocks out, uh, and, and knocks out, well what would that be? Let's say, uh, the wall crashes down, 90 of your bottles of beer are gone in 15 seconds from an earthquake and you have 10 bottles of beer left and then slowly but surely you start to replenish uh, so at the end of 40 years instead of 10 bottles of beer you have what would that be 13 bottles of beer and the 87 bottles of beer are still are still smashed down on the ground. That is uh, how I would uh, the analogy I would have for any clueless moron claiming that monarchs are recovering. But you know, 335,000 is better than zero. It's just not quite as good as a couple of million. All right, well, I did my noble savage 
rant yesterday. I guess I chased off one of my Doomer chicks forever. Uh, slapped me and ran off uh, for being a racist. But we have a couple of not exactly noble savage stories, but uh, a couple of stories about the difference between planet nibbling and planet eating. And you know, uh, Manga Bay has its own YouTube channel. And I'm thrilled to see, I haven't watched it this week, they are doing their YouTube video on planet eating versus planet nibbling. For anybody who does not understand the difference, you can go watch their video. Manga Bay explains industrial versus artisanal fishing. Okay, industrial fishing are those, you know, those giant trawlers from China who come suck up everything on the floor, uh, the, on the ocean floor, and these artisanal fishermen, you know, go out there with their little hooks and go out again and again and again. And when you get enough fishing artisans, especially if they bring along a couple of sticks of dynamite. I don't know whether dynamite fishing is dynamite fishing uh, an example of artisanal fishing or industrial. You know where these little planet nibblers, these little noble savages go out there and throw sticks of dynamite on a coral reef. Uh, is, is that planet nibbling or planet eating? Uh, so like what happened, you know, like when I was living uh, in Guatemala, 10 miles up this river, the Rio Dulce River, there were no fish left in the Rio. There's, there's no fish left in the Rio Dulce River anymore. It has nothing to do on any level with industrial fishing. It is the artisanal fishing. It is the Maya Indian noble savages that have pretty much fished out every single fish in the Rio Dulce River. So that is the difference between industrial versus artisanal fishing. And there's another story in here along the same lines about this unadulterated horseshit, uh, apocalyptic hopium term called sustainable communities. You might have heard uh, this hilarious term if you are a little uh, lefty, greeny, uh, suffering from the sustainable no noble savage myth. <clears throat> changing circumstances, there you go, changing circumstances like too many of them being born, that change turned, quote, sustainable communities into deforestation drivers, subsistence communities, huh, subsistence communities can drive forest loss to meet their basic needs their basic needs of charcoal to cook their bush meat, their basic needs, like in the case out in this hotel, their basic needs to build a margarita bar for people like me, uh, that basic need to build margarita bars for uh, gringos, their basic need to cook their, uh, to cook their bush meat, their basic need, of course, to build their little huts you know, to house their nine children, uh, those basic needs. <clears throat> subsistence, subsistence communities can drive forest loss to meet their basic needs when external pressures, poverty, and demand for natural resources increase. Wow! Says a new study in unveiling triggers that turn livelihoods from sustainable, sustainable into deforestation drivers. 
this is planet nibbling. They are talking about planet nibbling. Like where I lived in the Ecuadorian cloud forest in the Intag Valley of Ecuador, for instance. Okay? It were the subsistence communities that took out the 97% of forest that they had taken out when I was there 10 years ago. Nothing to do with industrial logging in the Intag Valley of the Ecuadorian Andes. This was planet eating, subsistence communities that uh, I was, well, I got run out of town by these subsistence communities. The impact of subsistence communities on forest loss has not been quantified to its true extent. Uh, well, I did quite a bit of quantifying it in my book, Peruvian Plunge, how many years ago. But, you know, the bottom line, the difference, between the impact of subsistence communities compared to planet eaters is still minimal. Alright, there you go. It is still minimal uh, compared to, you, you know, one planet eater can do the damage. It, it takes, it can take a hundred planet nibblers. You know, I say it is the difference between a white-tailed buck deer getting in your organic garden and eating it in one night, okay, versus a plague of aphids. You know, taking, uh, if you don't treat the aphids, a million aphids are going to do in a month what one white-tailed buck is going to do. This is the story about overpopulation. You will not read the word overpopulation anywhere in this story. Okay? This is 100% about how many planet nibblers does it take to equal one planet eater. About 90%, 90% of people globally living in extreme poverty, often in subsistence communities, rely on forest for at least part of their livelihoods, making them the first ones impacted by forest loss. And uh, anyone who wants to hear a lot more of this, you go to my playlist, Peruvian Plunge, and you uh, listen uh, to me reading my travels through the subsistence communities and noble savage villages of the Peruvian Amazon 14 years ago, and you will get a much better definition of planet nibbling. All right, okay, we have an article about Grumpy Cat. No, this is not a Grumpy Cat. This is not a Grumpy Cat. We have an article about Grumpy Cat in uh, Manga Bay. All right, well, I was just, we were just hanging out in the mangroves here in Mexico. Would you believe that in Sumatra, Mangrove clearing sparks scrutiny of loophole. Huh. Last year, a 100 hectare, a 250 acre patch of mangrove trees in eastern Sumatra was cleared to make way for an oil palm plantation that is called planet eating. Oil palm plantations are planet eaters. They eat 250 acres of mangroves while a planet nibbler with a machete might eat two mangrove trees. Yes. Oh, well this is where they actually, uh, where the planet eaters 
the uh, loophole they were taking uh, advantage of to do this is the planet nibblers because they don't uh, you know there's not a you know how much of an effect so the planet nibblers are allowed to go in there and harvest their little mangroves you, you, you know to, for firewood or whatever so what the planet eaters did the palm oil corporation is they went in there and packaged together packaged together planet nibblers legal claims to form one big plantation averting the need for environmental checks or permits required of a corporate concession so the uh, these you know these multi-million dollar global corporations fully understand the difference between planet nibbling and planet eating and so they just go in there and, and, and they pay these little planet nibblers to sell them their legal concessions and instead of 250 planet nibblers now you have one big planet eater and they are perfectly able to go in there and uh, mow down 250 more acres of mangroves and uh, you better believe this is uh, a, a common thing okay now this is planet eating we're going to go to sub-saharan africa to the uh Shit out country of Liberia. Liberian courts rubber stamp export shipment of illegal logs. <clears throat> On January 16th, a timber corporation, a planet eater, won a controversial lawsuit in Liberia when a court when a court ordered forestry officials there to allow a shipment of illegally harvested ecchi logs to be exported overseas. The ruling was the latest chapter in a years-long saga that environmentalists say points to a breakdown of regulation in Liberia's forestry sector. Imagine that. Um, an unpublished report implicates senior Liberian government officials in serious violations of laws meant to protect their country's forest. Uh, imagine that. And this gets me to the difference between legal and the illegal logging. There is no you know, real difference between legal or illegal logging. Logging is logging. Whether you're in Liberia or let's go, we already had this story word for word about this new illegal logging road uh, in the Brazilian, in this Brazilian Indian reserve accelerating destruction. I don't know why they ran that story again. Here at Cat News, the illegal jaguar trade is thriving online. Why aren't governments stopping the illegal wild, the illegal jaguar trade? Well, part of the answer was probably found in that uh, Liberian logging thing. So that's part of the answer. It, it, is that these uh, Banana Republic uh, government? officials are being just paid off to turn a blind eye to it but much bigger than that is they don't give a damn okay they do not care about any illegal jaguar trade uh, no government official down here in Latin America gives a damn about the illegal jaguar trade and those who do give a damn are probably wondering how they can get an illegal bribe to look the other way. Alright, more stories on mangroves 
we've kind of covered mangroves. Uh, here's a story defending weeds. Defending weeds. Uh, there you go. I have to admit, I've been in a war with weeds myself. Okay, here's more stories about the Brazilian noble savages being invaded by the planet eaters. So I guess we have uh, Silva, on, we have Lula on the job. Alright, here is the illegal coral trade in Thailand. I guess there's no jaguars in Thailand. So, uh, now Thailand is cracking down on the illegal coral trade. Yes. Good luck on that. While authorities have made several arrests, they have yet to bust any high-profile coral traders. You would not believe this, uh, that a Brazilian meat packer, wow, a Brazilian meat packer has been accused of greenwashing. I cannot believe that a Brazilian meat packer could be getting accused of greenwashing. Wow. Imagine that. Uh, okay, let's do there. You know, Manga Bay pays a little bit of attention to climate. This is their weekly climate story, I guess. Temperature extremes plus ecological marginalization. Don't you love that word? Temperature extremes plus ecological marginalization raise species risk. In a business as usual carbon emission scenario, human's current trajectory, two in five land vertebrates, otherwise known as 40% of land vertebrates, uh, this is how noisy my motel room is, guys, by the way. This is what I sleep through every night. Uh, two in five land vertebrates could be exposed to temperatures equal to or exceeding the hottest temperatures of the past decades across at least half of their range by the end of the century. Uh, yeah, 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 uh, uh-huh. More than one in eight mammal species have already lost part of their former range due to basically dying of heat stroke. What do you think, mammal? Are you enjoying the ceiling fan? Okay, here's the latest update, you know, about the European Union uh, trying to get tough on dirty commodities in Indonesia and uh, Malaysia having a shit fit. Uh, the governments of Indonesia and Malaysia have lambasted the EU regulation that will ban the trade of, quote, dirty commodities, including palm oil sourced from illegal plantations and deforestation. <clears throat> they argue, correctly, that the, the regulations will harm the palm oil industry. Wow. Imagine that, regulations harming the palm oil industry. No wonder uh, Indonesia and Malaysia are on full freak out. Okay, let's go over just all over uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. 
more than 100,000 Zambian women and children are filing a class action lawsuit against mining giant Anglo-American for decades of lead poisoning, poisoning at a mine. Huh? In Ghana, illegal gold mining is polluting rivers that local communities depend on for their drinking water, bathing, and farming. Uh, how about in Nigeria? In Nigeria, a legal case against a village chief who allegedly sold off the community's mining license to a Chinese corporation has highlighted what analysts call the confusing state of mining regulation in Nigeria. Here is a perfect example of planet nibblers joining forces with planet eaters. This isn't just any villager, this is the village chief. So these Chinese corporations, they go into Nigeria, uh, they say who is the head man of this village, uh, they pay off the uh, head man of the village to support their new mine and then the mine has suddenly been uh, okay, supported by the village, and then you have a hundred thousand uh, people dying of lead poisoning. All right, here we go. I love this one. Carbon markets entice but confuse corporations. You know, I have to feel kind of bad for the, for the corporations on this one trying to understand carbon markets. Good luck. <coughs> Alright, what is going on with the war in Ukraine? Uh, well, Ukrainian ecologists say nature will, will suffer no matter war's result. Quote, as Ukrainian ecologists, we are constantly reminded of the extent to which war itself is a war with nature. Do you think so? So this is one place that the Ruskies are agreeing, the Russian ecologists are, seem to be agreeing with their Ukrainian colleagues that it makes no difference which way uh, the war in Ukraine goes. You know who is uh, who's going to lose. It's the planet. What is it? What are they saying? How many thousands and thousands and thousands of dead dolphins? have washed up in the Black Sea in the past few weeks. Good God. What's going with all um, of the noble savages in Nicaragua? Indigenous communities threatened as deforestation rises in Nicaraguan reserves. Huh. They're looking at two protected areas, two protected biosphere reserves. In Nicaragua, both experience deforestation in the hands of illegal loggers, miners, and cattle ranchers last year. Deforestation of Nicaragua's largest primary forest has been a violent, ugly process for the noble savages who were granted land titles to the areas in the 1980s. Indigenous leaders and environmental defenders believe the situation will only get worse in 2023 as gold mining accelerates and the government cracks down on those opposing the new gold mine. Anyway, guys, uh... Uh, well, this goes on and on and on. Uh, good Lord. But, uh, 
I think I'm going to let the uh, probably the logging trucks or whatever outside the window speak for me. We're just going to wrap it up here because uh, I've got to see if maybe taking a shower and a shampoo will make me feel a little bit better. Get out there and enjoy the paradise of Bacalar, Mexico, which you hear outside the window while well, you still can. Okay, Don Gato, you survived. I have put the I have put Don Gato to sleep. Don Gato is sound asleep. He has been bored to death by my Yes. You tell him. Bye guys. Mm -hmm. I hear that. Now what you have to say about the collapse of a planet, Don Gato. Is that is that what you have to say? Bye, guys.